So I've been thinking. There's a Starbucks at Guantanamo Bay. News to me too. Um, I want a coffee from the Gitmo Starbucks more than anything, I think. I, I, uh, I think I, I, I think I desire that. I think I want that more than anything. Where's my drink? Speaking of coffee. Hold on. <laughs> Fuck. Hold on. I can't, I've just been losing shit all day. I swear I've got like a little Keebler elf running around here stealing my shit. There it is. Okay. Uh, or I'm just a dumb baby boy who loses shit sipping on my dumb bitch juice. I'll cede merit to that possibility as well. Um, <laughs> excuse me, got acid reflux today. I don't know if I should be doing this, but I kind of want to tell this story, but not really. Um, so yeah, uh, story time and coffee time. What's poppin' squad? So I never know what to name a fucking video, if you couldn't, like, tell by now, if that hasn't been made apparent. Um, I try not to dwell too long, and I'll just kind of string a few things I instantly think of together most of the time. And another weird thing that I do is when it comes to these types of videos where, uh, where it's just me talking, I, I record a video, or excuse me, let me back up. I don't record a video and then name it, I and then upload it. I name it first, actually, I don't know why. Um, I don't know, like, I, I kind of feel like it helps me start somewhere when recording or something. But, um, but I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll write something random down, uh, like lyrics or something stupid I heard recently somewhere, or I don't know, like an amalgamation of random words or an abstract thought that I might have pop into my ADHD adult brain. Um, and this is like usually right before I hit record. Um, yeah, usually like beginning something is usually the hardest part. Um, like the hardest part for me, um, when it comes to like just about anything, I was going to say like a creative endeavor, but really just anything, I never know where to start. Um, so perhaps I do it just to get the ball rolling or something. Um, I'll get anxious that I'm about to hit record and start a creative endeavor without much but kind of an idea of what I want to say. And that's it. So this is, it might be like me kind of telling myself like, okay, Kurt, start somewhere, name it. Um, and then I just don't feel as empty handed going into it. I don't know. And I guess I had masturbation on the brain right at the moment I threw out the fishing line into the shallow lake of my own head. I guess that that's just, that was just my lottery number today dicks <laughs> like here you go carrot dicks um and uh i don't know <laughs> i guess like a title like this might provoke the interest of some other outside uh not normal viewers you know like new newcomers and because it's i don't know a title like this is kind of intriguing a little clickbaity um but yeah dicks man Beating dicks. The old devil's handshake, as they say. <sighs> the first time I jerked off, I thought I invented it. Um, <laughs> I was maybe eight years old. Absolute game changer. I was like, people have to know about this. This thing I've created, this invention, it's going to take me so far in life. 
Um, um, but yeah, um, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Jacking off isn't what I want to make this entirely about. I had a, another little story from my teen years that I wanted to share. And uh, um, if you thought that, uh, not the last video, but I think it was the one before it, it was the one with the other, the, the girlfriend story. Um, if you thought that was a cringe fest, this one might be worse. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, it's not a masturbation story. As I said, I, I, I want to move away from the masturbation topic. Um, I know I'm building it up to be like this teen, this teen masturbation story. Like I, I said just now, like, yeah, it's a, a story from my teens. And the name of this thing is called like, <laughs> but um, yeah, this, uh, this, I, I don't know. I think I've only told one person this story and not many people saw this play out. But um, uh, here we go. So we've all asked somebody that we thought was cute out on a date, right? You cringing yet? Um, I don't know how to kick this one off other than uh, I was at a movie theater. Uh, with my dad and my two brothers and when I was 18 so about 2008 uh, I was newly single I had uh, I had been with one girl before that and that one girl I didn't ask her out she gave me her number when we were like 11 so I was new to the dating scene and um, uh, new to the dating scene at the, for the first time in my teens and I had never asked anyone out before um, so we walk into the movie theater and I'll never forget. It was the, the fireweed theater. And I remember at the concessions, there was a big cardboard, uh, the fuck is it called? Like a big cardboard stand up of, a. am blanking on the name. Oh, Step Brothers. It was a big cardboard, it was a big promotional cardboard. You've seen them for, uh, the movie Step Brothers. I don't think that's what we were there to see, but that's not important. What was important was the girl working the counter, uh, second register from the right, maybe 5'5", five five, my age, brown shoulder length hair under her uniform hat, and almost kind of a resting fuck me face kind of thing going on, kind of thing going on. Uh, that's what was important. This girl, she's our uh, our uh, like a focal point of our story here. So now, um, I didn't talk to her when we went up to the counter. In fact, it was um, it was my dad buying the shit up front. And uh, again, I was essentially brand new to this, despite being in a six year relationship beforehand. Uh, I was newly single. But I, um, I had landed that girl when I was in fifth grade where, you know, like child, child dating rules applied. That sounds really bad. Child dating. Uh, forgot that term. Um, we were both children. <laughs> we were both consenting children. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, like when you're a kid, when you're like in elementary school or even junior high, like dating is just kind of like relegated to just like holding hands and getting like, like like fluttering eyelashes and maybe like writing notes and stuff and um, maybe like a little bit of drama surrounding it in, in schools. But, um, but I didn't fully, you know, like I'm 18 now and I didn't fully know, uh, I'm, I'm now 18 at this point in my life, right? And I didn't fully know like the rules of the game at this new stage in life, but um, so I was just really, I was just going into it blind, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, my dad uh, was buying tickets and shit up front, and we we go find our movie. But man, I still have neck pain to this day from uh, looking back at her workstation as I followed them. 
Um, and at some point during the movie, I'm fucking around with my little box of candy, like the, the, the box that my candy came in. Um, I'm tearing it up a little bit in my lap and I'm like cutting off pieces. I'm just like, it's, it's turning into confetti in my lap. And, um, sorry, <laughs> it's bothering me. I don't know what it wants to do. Um, yeah, I'm tearing this, 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 uh, cardboard candy wrapper in my lap up and I get this idea. Um, I pull out a pen that I had on me <clears throat> and I write my cell number on a part of the paper or cardboard or whatever. And I get up to go to the lobby and I'm just going to go for it. Right. I've never done this. Um, I figured it's a small theater. It's likely empty out there right now. There's no chance of a customer to demand her attention as I'm talking to her. So, you know, kind of have like a, I'm able to kind of maybe have like a little banter with her, you know, um, not take up too much of her day, but like just kind of introduce myself without somebody kind of like, hey, can I have a popcorn? You know, it's like some, you know, dick fuck coming in just like, <sighs> yeah. I like the order and it's like, I don't know, you know, so, um, but there's going to be a slight twist to my approach. I've never done this before and I'm already adding like all kinds of like accents and twists to my first approach and a twist to my approach that will set me apart from all the other guys she met that like, that must be talking to her, you know, that she, you know, I'm probably not the only guy that's like, Oh, you know, I'm probably not the only one my age. I'm probably not the only 18 year old that's come in and just like, Hey baby, <laughs> or whatever. Um, cause, uh, you know, she's really pretty and I can only assume, I can only assume that she can't remember every guy she turns down. I'm making a lot of assumptions here, but I'm kind of going, kind of going into this thinking that the deck is stacked against me. So I'm going in thinking like, I'll stand out. Um, so I'm in the lobby. <clears throat> so I'm in the lobby. She's still there. And sure enough, um, it's pretty chill out here. She's helping like the only customer out there. And I get in line behind them. Uh, despite being there, despite there being another station open and their line has no one. Um, I, I got into that line actually thinking um, that the other cashier would you know, like flag me down, uh, over to their station, but I guess it didn't happen. Uh, not that that would deter me from leaving the spot in the line if they had asked me to come over. Um, so the person in front of me leaves and suddenly I've got about 10 open uninterrupted feet between her, me and this girl. And all I've got to do is take four steps and talk to her. I've been holding this, uh, I've been holding the cardboard with my number this whole time. And I check it. It isn't smudged or anything. Good. I walk up and she asks, she asks what she can get for me. <clears throat> uh, oh, hi. What can I get for you? Um, and strangely enough, I'm not panicking or anything. And I tell her something to the effect of, Hey, uh, <laughs> so I slide my hand. Yeah. What does I do? I slide my hand forward I, I, with the, the, the phone number and I go, not creepy or anything. I hope <laughs> this is like half my life ago. Maybe. I don't know. I really hope. So I go, uh, put my, the number on the on the table on the counter I go uh hey uh odd request uh could you uh throw this away for me you know I didn't give like a I didn't like accent it with like a you know like any kind of a any kind of like weird showmanship and it wink I didn't like <laughs> hey you know I didn't like you know 
Um, I felt like what I was doing was enough, and I didn't need to, like, be weird about it. Um, I lay down the piece of cardboard on the counter, face up, and you can see my phone number written on, written on it in large font. There's absolutely no way and fuck my intent is going under her radar. Um, the intent in my tone, my relaxed body language as I deliberately and carefully set down my largely written phone number right in front of her. Um, my friendly, I, I, I'm, I'm friendly, I'm trying to relax and be as normal as possible. Uh, given my, my it's my first time doing this and I'm not I'm not here to creep anybody out You know, she says no, you know, she looks at it goes, Pfft. you know <laughs> um, You know it would have sucked but I would, I would have accepted it um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm looking smiling but not like bug eyes and some big smile Can you throw this away from me? <laughs> you know but yeah, like I'm, I mean, I know I'm deviating slightly from the normal method of giving a girl my number, but I'm spelling this out so hard. My number's just right there. And I have the odd request of like, hey, can you throw this away? I'm not buying anything. I'm just like, you know, um, so she glances at it, still smiling, uh, she doesn't look at it long <clears throat> and her eyes just kind of dart at it really fast and then they come back at me uh, to meet my eyes and it didn't even look like she really even looked at it at all but just kind of like you know like head motioned at it like it was really fast she looks slightly confused at, as to why I'd get in line at the concessions, like I said, just to use the trash, just to use the trash can back there when there's trash cans all over the fucking place, you know, by the, by the arcade, by the entrance, right when you walk in by the, down the hall with the, the theaters, um, fucking trash is every, trash cans everywhere. And she's just like, okay. Um, so yeah, uh. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop this deep analysis of the transaction. Hold on. I'm going to stop this deep analysis of the transaction. And with you knowing all you know now, I'm going to let this play out in real time for you. Because with all of this planning and anticipation I had since I saw her an, uh, you know, an hour beforehand at this point, it all happened so fast. Once I finally spoke to her is when the real is like where the real pain is at. And just how how the final verdict of all this just blurred right past me. It was like a car crash. I just couldn't do anything. It just happened. All right. To recap. And is with no like with no like ana uh, analytical breakdown. It's just in real time here's what happened. All right. So, the dumb fuck in front of me uh is gone. I walk up to this girl at the counter. And I, uh, I, I can feel myself smiling a little bashfully, but I'm confident. And she asks what I need, all right? And, um, oh God, fucking end my life. She asks what I need, and I very deliberately set down my phone number on the counter. And uh, the number facing uh, upwards towards her and with a friendly face I, I tell her yeah could you uh could you throw this away for me and my eyes my eyes right on hers she uh she glances down and looks at it real fast then looks back at me and with almost no hesitation she picks it up she picks it up <laughs> she picks it up balls it up and goes oh sure still smiling makes a half turn to uh the trash bin behind her really fast and uh then realigns uh realigns herself to face back towards me and in the same in the same joyful tone as she had that whole time 
looks and, and asks, uh, was there anything else? This happened so fast. I didn't have time to like, no, you know, I didn't have, so I just kind of froze. Uh, the, this might've been my face. Um, and I was like quickly trying to like calibrate like what went wrong on whose end to, and like where to go from here. Cause I'm now at this cash register and I, I just went through my entire script right there. My entire script. I went through the entire thing that I went, you know, down, I went, I went over in my head and I'm out of material. I'm out of lines. I'm just, can I do anything else for you? <laughs> just like, can I do anything else for you? Fuck, man. Um, it just happened all at once. I was in such disbelief. I couldn't figure out which one of us was the idiot here. Like, and um, with my mouth feeling like it was going to say words, I just shiftly took a few steps back. I turned around and just started walking. I didn't know where to, just wherever was at the end of the direction I was now facing. Big L, man. Fuck. <laughs> just a real like, notice me senpai kind of moment. I just felt like I was cucked by reality. Um, so I find myself in the hallway at the, the, the theater rooms. I find my theater. I hadn't been gone for more than like maybe seven or eight minutes. I found my seat and I just kind of sat there. Um, there was a, there was a loud giant fucking movie being played like right in front of me. But the real movie I was watching was in my head. And it was the, the horror comedy that I, I just a minute ago starred in. And was uh, that was fresh in my memory. No longer than like 20 seconds long. Like, I was just like replaying that, that same 20 seconds. And it just replayed and replayed for the remainder of the film. And I was just stunned. I didn't feel heartbroken uh, or, I don't know, yeah, I didn't feel heartbroken. I didn't feel like rejected, just stunned. Like that should have worked or at least gotten a response from her or something. It would have been better if I was legitimately turned down rather than simply unnoticed. Eat are getting hot. So, <sighs> it would have been better if I was just like turned down, you know? I'm not interested. Because with failure, how do I say this? Because with failure, there would have at least been the opportunity to maybe reflect and learn about what I might have done wrong. Whereas this, it might as well have just never happened. And I couldn't even make myself known. Uh, like, fuck, you know, like 18 year old me didn't have anything to work off of. Like, did I say something wrong? That wasn't made clear by the situation. Excuse me. Uh, like, did I make her uncomfortable even? No way of knowing. It was my first shot at this, and I couldn't determine my results and figure what I needed to change next time. You know, like, I was still at square one. I didn't know what to change for my, you know, the second time I asked a girl out. Um, I don't know, man. It still just blows my mind. I don't dwell or 
wring my hands about it to this day. I don't want to make it seem like I do or like I was legitimately like hurt by this. Again, I was just stunned. Um, or that I pity myself over. In fact, I never have. It was just a very strange experience, uh, is all. The shock has worn off, but I still sometimes go back to that moment. Um, and one thing I kind of, one thing I realized might have happened, and I find amusement in this, in the possibility of this, is, um, what if she knew? You know, like that brief glance down at my number was in fact all she needed. She looked at it really fast, knew what I was doing, and acted ditzy. Oh, hi. You know, she acted like that with everybody, but like maybe she just like maintained the whole like, you know, concessions worker persona. Um, I played it off and then like maybe she played it off as to seem totally oblivious to the situation. Like maybe she wasn't even, even what, maybe she wasn't interested in even being asked out by anyone in the first place. And that was her just bypassing uh, the whole interaction having or how you know like having to deal with a situation that she didn't want to deal with um especially when she's on the clock you know i thought about that too she might not have even wanted to deal with shit like that at work you know like um <laughs> a guy uh, you know i'm working <laughs> you know like i'm busting my ass i, I don't it's not what i'm here for <laughs> so maybe I don't know, she would have played it off so seamlessly though. Her unsuspecting manner, she hardly even looked at what I gave to her. I don't know. Whatever the case, um, it's long done and over, and the only thing that prevents me from feeling like a weirdo there was the fact that I was very young and further stipulated by the fact I had no prior experience. But yeah, um, I have a way of stressing and overthinking things, and despite that encounter being cringe and weird as fuck, I don't think it went nearly as bad as I make it out to be. Like, yeah, it was embarrassing, but I tend to throw a filter of dread over memories like that. I doubt she remembers. I hardly think of, you know, like I hardly think of it anymore. It's just shit in the past, and I think it's funny now. Um, but to bring this full circle, um, I was 18 year, uh, years old, right? And I had to muster, I had mustered up the courage to talk to someone I was attracted to that day and was still riding that wave of exhilaration. I probably jerked off later. Now, I don't know if I did. I don't remember that day, like after that. Um, but to put a nice, nice little neat bow on the story and weave some sort of theme throughout the topics of this video, let's just say that I did. And that there was a very happy, happy ending for our hero. Um, I can't believe I fucking told that story. I might not upload this. All right, well, while I, uh, one, now, while I uh, go and ponder if I should upload this, I'm going to, this went on longer than I thought it would, and I've uh, publicly embarrassed myself enough. I'm dipping.